from uh, Northwell Health and uh, Emily Kagan is the Vice President of uh, Digital Health and Innovation Strategy at the uh, Northwell Health System, which for those of you not from the New York metropolitan area is one of the, uh, the top three systems, if not the top system. Emily, you can give us more direction on that, but it is a major health system in the New York metropolitan area and uh, certainly large for me in my hometown of uh, Terrytown, New York on the Hudson River. Uh, part of Phelps uh, Hospital in Sleepy Hollow is a part of the network. Uh, so we love Northwell. But uh, Emily, if you could um, give us a little bit of background of yourself just to, to start off as a, as a brief overview of what you're doing and what you see is trending right now in, in digital health innovation. Absolutely. So thank you for having me. Um, thanks, everybody, for making time this afternoon. So um, as, as you were just mentioning, we are uh, Northwell Health System is New York State's largest healthcare private health care provider. Um, so we've got 23 different hospitals um, over, I think, at this point, about 800 different physician practices, medical school research facilities, um, one of the biggest labs in the country. I mean, we really sort of span the gambit. And so um, uh, when I joined this organization, I was actually part of a, a hospital uh, the, called Lenox Hill Hospital uh, that then joined the Northwell uh, family. And so it was really fascinating to sort of begin my career here, understanding what digital technologies could mean for what was then a community hospital. Um, and then as we joined the Northwell family, I moved on to not only consider what that would mean at a single hospital level, but what would that mean at a multi-system level? What does that mean in the ambulatory space as well as the inpatient space? What does that mean when you are considering um, how a host of these different technologies come together to um, you know, not just do what we do in bricks and mortar, but now do it in bits and bytes, right? So um, one of the things that um, was important to me in my early career Career was really um, bringing the discipline of um, first user experience science and uh, making sure that all of the um, discipline, rigor, research methodologies that get applied to uh, user experience came with us into the digital health design space, um, as well as um, starting to develop a muscle around uh, software development. Right. So I think a lot of times in healthcare, we saw teams that would sort of um, uh, uh, sort of give over the innovation, the digital innovation to whatever vendor they were partnered with. Right. And then sort of license it back. And um, that's certainly a strategy in some places. It makes a lot of sense. But um, you, you, you sort of uh, mortgage your digital future if you don't also have your own internal muscle to um, be able to develop these things, to work with them, to get your custom connections from this system to that system. And so uh, building out a, um, a team that could really work on that was, was really critical. And so as we've built out um, the digital patient experience team at, at Northwell Health, um, we've been looking at this space and seeing a lot of really interesting changes. Everything from um, utilities that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're sort of jacks of all trades and, and perhaps maybe masters of none. Um, but we're also seeing some really good movement in terms of people understanding that no system is a blank slate, right? Unlike other um, uh, industries where maybe you get the chance to start fresh in healthcare, sometimes it's, it's going to be only one piece of an application suite. And I think for a long time, vendors didn't really know how to play in that way. Um, but we were actually able to see more and more partners say, no, no, this is the piece that I'm particularly talented at. This is the piece that I, I really can bring into the stack that you have. Um, and they're coming with better ways to, to integrate and play with big players like us. Love it. And I think that's, uh, that's a big part of what's happening, right? We're seeing the need for health systems to have a front door, if you will, for innovation and for innovators uh, so that they know where to access folks like yourself and how to access them. And so I, I think as a part of that, then, uh, as you're spearheading this uh, transition, you know, kind of Northwell's website, uh, you know, as that front door uh, for an open source kind of stack, Talk a little bit about the, the reasoning behind that stage in, in transitioning uh, that kind of uh, that kind of website access and that kind of technology stack for Northwell. Right. So um, uh, probably around 2013, 2014, when I took over um, running the, the consumer facing, the public facing websites for Northwell Health, there were somewhere around. 80, 85 different websites that represented themselves as Northwell in some way, shape or form. And not only is that expensive, it's unsustainable from a management perspective. Um, and 
every single one of those um, separate sites had a different backend, a different code base, a different way that you had to interact and a different vendor that we were supporting it with. And increasingly at that time, we were being asked to create new applications, online bill pay systems, um, better utilities for find a doc, better um, uh, ways for people to get price estimates and request medical records. And, and what we kept finding is that we would have to license these in onesies and twosies because, you know, you could have it for this vendor, but it wouldn't work with that one over there. Um, and even when we would get some of these utilities, they were maybe an 80% solution. There was always 20% more that we didn't have. And so when um, I, 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 I took over the role, you know, I was given the mandate to consolidate, but it was very, very important to me that we owned our own code. Right? Because if we're black boxed out of our own code, um, we don't know what we don't know, first and foremost. Second of all, we can't innovate at the pace that we need. We have to innovate at the pace of somebody else's roadmap right? or somebody else's budget. I think one of the things that's been most challenging for a lot of big health systems and innovators to collaborate is that we don't budget on a, uh, a quarterly cycle or on a um, sort of just in time way. We, we look a year, sometimes two or three out of its capital and we have to call our shot. And this is a digital world. Things move so much faster than that. And so when you, when you really can't be as nimble as you want, either in terms of funding or in terms of coding, you're really hampered of doing any sort of innovation on your own. And so the first piece of that was really just to make sure that, that we had the code, we had the engineering talent, we had the user experience talent who was going to be able to take advantage of, of, of their skills and, and move at the speed of Northwell, not at the speed of a vendor. And so when you look at that and uh, you kind of look at that kind of the kind of energy it brought to Northwell and the kind of momentum it brought to you in that in your role and your position. Uh, and then you think about the digital patient experience as you made that transition uh, and, and really you as the leader of the digital patient experience right within Northwell. Can you describe what the team's major focuses are today in the ecosystem today in this kind of quasi kind of odd post pandemic are we really post pandemic what, what's right. happening next no one really knows but to talk about that kind of challenges and the kind of efforts that you're facing there totally so um first i will say i'm, I'm fortunate enough to be um in, a, in what i would call sort of a, a shared leadership model with, with two other leaders the, the the head of the dpx program is actually a woman named laura semelis uh, who came from a revenue cycle and operations background i have a partner who leads engineering named david luft and he's from the custom software group at it and i came from the marketing background uh, uh, and, and brought my expertise in user experience and consumer design and that um triumvirate, as it were, right, that was not in any one division of the organization, but brought um, uh, knowledge and, and skills from all of those different areas really um, has been a, 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 an incredibly powerful place to work. I think everybody in healthcare will tell you the thing they hate most are the silos, right? And so in order to create this digital experience, the very first thing we did is knock down those silos, including in some of our leadership structures. And so by virtue of being a team that had all of these relationships across the organization, <laughs> You know, when the pandemic hit there, you know, you, you get called in a, a thousand and one different directions. And as a team who previously was sort of banging down people's doors saying digital is important, you really got to get on with this, please, let's make the change you need. Suddenly people were turning around and coming to us and knocking down our door and saying, we needed this yesterday. Right. And so for an organization that is really only about three and a half years old, um, you know, we probably made 10 years of progress in eight months of time. Right. Um, just in terms of uh, organizational awareness of the importance of digital, um, the need to do things like virtualizing, um, uh, you know, everything from telemedicine to communications, which previously people felt could only be done by you know, a human on the phone. And now we can do by text messages and emails. Um, so so I think people know that, that this is the future now. And they know that also that it can be a complement, right? That it's not technology replacing humans, but rather augmenting what we can do. And that is really, really exciting. And I think one of the places that we're in now in this sort of, you know, semi post pandemic world is so many of us feel that there's gains that have been made because of this pandemic, right? Tape that has been cut, new ideas that have come to the fore. And now we want to hold that ground. Right now, we want to make sure that everything we did, we bake in, and everything that we sort of slap together, we can clean up and and strengthen because this needs to be the new foundation that we move forward with. And so, I think that's really where we're a lot of us are finding ourselves right now. How do you lock that in, and how do you say no, no, no? This is the new normal. Digital is a part of how we deliver care, 
um, and we're not going back to that old way. That's incredible. And, you know, talking about moving from the old way to the new way, uh, one of the things that you're a big part of is the HitLab Breakthrough Alliance. Uh, again, this five-year-old verification accelerator uh, based out of New York City in, in partnership with Economic Development Corporation, New York City EDC. Uh, describe how uh, that, that's worked within the program that you started and what you've done at Northwell. And as a board member, as a, as a leader within the Breakthrough Alliance, Talk a little bit about how the Breakthrough Alliance and the research from there has helped shape some of your decision making at Northwell. So one of the things that's really interesting about being um, in sort of this, this, this bridge point, right? Because so much of what we see um, through the Breakthrough Alliance is on the edge, right? It is, it is that cutting edge of the technology, the cutting edge of the problems that we're solving. Whereas we inside of the, the, the Northwell Digital Patient Experience Program are, are building sort of like, um, uh, core bread and butter kinds of utilities. And so I would say the best thing that really has happened as, as, a, as a byproduct of being a part of this is to see where are we going, right? What is going to become the new normal? What is going to become, um, uh, you know, not just a fringe technology, but something that is really going to become mature enough that we can incorporate it into the rest of our stack. And I think it's just been really a, a phenomenal opportunity to not just, you know, a lot of us scout companies separately with our own, our own ventures divisions, et cetera. And when you do that, you only have the benefit of one perspective. What I really love about, about the Alliance and the work that we've been able to do is you're not just getting the one perspective on whether or not this works, whether or not this makes sense. You're getting it from a number of different places. And that's a different kind of um, either, either validation or you know, uh, ability to sort of separate you know, what is just sort of a bright, shiny object versus what has much greater um, applicability, uh, applicability even across a broader spectrum of care providers. Um, and I think that that's really been very valuable. That's incredible. Yeah, and I think that uh, just the, the, the point of view that you bring as well is so incredibly important for folks from Merck and Novo Nordisk and Novartis and all the other folks from health plans and folks like that. So it, it's just an incredible uh, attribute to have you as a part of that board. So thank you for that. Uh, and we've got a, a lot of questions coming from the gallery. And, uh, you know, one of them is, uh, is around electronic health records. And uh, you know, I'm not sure how much uh, you work with uh, what the, the the Northwell EHR, but um, are you seeing a move by some of these major systems, and they're becoming incredibly powerful entities now? Uh, Twenty years ago, and certainly thirty years ago, when I started my teaching career at Quinnipiac, no one really knew what electronic medical record. The term electronic health record wasn't even then around, but no one even knew what those were. Today, because of what happened with the American Affordable Care Act and uh, other things like that. Uh, we saw now it's front burner for a lot of citizens in America, especially with the pandemic. What's happening from your point of view around keeping those systems open? So I think there's a there's there's a couple different trends here. First and foremost, I think um, anyone in healthcare will tell you that um, you know those of us who design custom software owe a debt of apology to the physicians and clinicians for the EHRs as they were initially implemented. We did not think carefully enough about what that interface would do to degrade the nature of clinical relationships. And so there's a huge movement um, inside many, many, many different EMR vendors um, to get better at this and to, and to create systems that, that um, uh, help providers as opposed to get in the way of, of quality patient care. So you've got one movement there and that's sort of on the clinical interface. I think you have a, a similar movement, which was around, and this was with the ACA with, with meaningful use, right? Uh, everybody said, well, let's just get some patient portals in people's hands. Um, but again, we did not consider what that utility was. That was done to meet these meaningful use measures. And, and, and they were almost meaningless in terms of what they put set as the criteria. Because once again, the criteria were set independent of the people who actually use the technology. And so the second trend I would see is that um, the, the, the patient portal is fundamentally being redesigned. And, and that is around this third point, as you mentioned, interoperability, right? That has been the shift from meaningful use is now interoperability. And when data can move freely, you don't have to be bound by any one of these interfaces. You can pick a new display. I was talking with some folks from Apple yesterday. They're really great at display. Right, of information. Where are the places where we can take cues from those who can do it better and say, at the end of the day, we don't need to have a data monopoly. At the end of the day, we need to make sure we're privileging um, providers' experiences, 
patients' experiences and making that data functional, that needs to be the primary focus, not whether or not it's uh, exclusively owned in, in, in Epic or Cerner or Allscripts or whatever it's going to be. And, that, and, that, and that's a, a, a paradigm shift in how we've, we've thought about these relationships with these EMR vendors. That's correct. That's phenomenal. And really, really important to understand too that paradigm shift and how important it is for not just being patient centric, but being user centric.